Sri Lanka, home to vast tea plantations, rolling mountains, world-class surfing, and blue trains. If you're like me and you like to do more with your vacations than just sit around on a beach all day, Sri Lanka is the place for you. It's an adventure lover's paradise. What's going on my dudes? My name is Noah VDE and today I'm going to show you guys how to travel Sri Lanka in three weeks. Getting right into it, we're going to catch a plane into Colombo's International Airport. The Colombo Airport in Sri Lanka has got you covered. You can buy a washing machine or an oven or any other large appliance for that matter because that's exactly what you want when you're headed to go pick up your bag. Once you've got your bag, you can head into Colombo either by Uber or by bus. Spending one day in Colombo was enough for me. Find a place to stay and then book a bus ticket headed up north to Jaffna for the following day. Jaffna had to be one of my favorite places in Sri Lanka. Over the course of the three days we spent up there, we probably saw a total of like three other tourists. It was insane. While you're up there, you should rent a motorbike and explore the surrounding towns. There's quite a few day trips that you can make from Jaffna, but my favorite thing by far was the Kiramali Pond. The pond itself is super cool. It's located right beside the ocean, it's extremely clean, and it's fed from a natural spring just up the river. The locals there were so friendly and inviting, making this an awesome place to spend the afternoon. Next up, we're taking a convoluted system of buses to the East Coast beaches, where you'll find a small town called Nila Valley. Nila Valley is the perfect place to spend a relaxing two days. It's a bit quieter than the other East Coast beaches, which is what I love about it. Grab a beer, sit on the beach, and enjoy. One thing that you have to do while you're traveling in Sri Lanka is eat kotu. Kotu is a staple Sri Lankan dish made out of vegetables, chopped up roti, and egg all tossed together. It is so good. Thank you. After our time in Nila Valley, we're going to hop on a bus and head down south to a popular destination called Sigiriya. Sigiriya is a small town home to two famous peaks, Lion's Rock and Pitarangala. Spending one day here is perfect as you can visit one for sunrise and the other for sunset. <laughs> Both of these peaks have interesting hikes and beautiful views. Next up on our list is Candy. You can reach Candy by bus and spend one day exploring as that's all you'll really need. Candy is a massive city with a huge transportation hub, which we'll be using the next day when we catch a train to Hatton. The train is going to be so busy, but the ride is absolutely beautiful. Once you hop off the train in Hatton, you're going to walk outside of the train station and hop on the bus that will take you to Adams Peak. Adams Peak was my favorite part of the entire journey through Sri Lanka. This 2,300 meter peak is a pilgrimage made by tourists and Sri Lankans alike. The bus you took to get here drops you off at the base of Adams Peak in a small town. You find a place to stay, you grab something to eat, and then you go to bed very early because you're going to be up in a couple hours. The hike to Summit is no joke, but man is it ever rewarding. You begin the trek at about 2 a.m. as you want to be to the very top for sunrise. Now I know this doesn't sound too appealing. Feeling, but trust me, once you get to the top, you feel so rewarded watching that sunrise, knowing that you woke up super early at such a terrible hour to go on a massive hike up a mountain. Depending on your activity level, you can get to the top in about three and a half to four hours. It's roughly 5,500 steps each way. Dudes, if you're looking to travel to Sri Lanka, I have got you covered. I've created a comprehensive travel guide covering anything and everything that you might want to know before your trip. Stuff like the highlights, the must-see places, how to budget your trip and deal with visas, vaccines, banking, anything like that. If you want to check it out, you can. NoahVD.com forward slash store. After your epic journey up and down Adams Peak, you're going to head back to Hatton and hop on the train to Ella. The train ride to Ella is commonly regarded as one of the most beautiful train rides in the entire world. Getting to Hatton was actually the first half of it so this is just the second half. Again, try your very best to get a window or a door spot so you can see outside.
Ella is located in the mountains, so it's a bit chillier, but you're surrounded by nature. With so much to do around Ella, you can easily spend four days here. Some things that you've got to check out are the Nine Arch Bridge, Ella's Rock, and Little Adam's Peak. Pro tip, before you visit the Nine Arch Bridge, you want to check the train timetables. Trains cross the bridge throughout the day and you want to be there to catch one. Next up, we'll catch another sequence of buses that will take us from Ella to Udawalaway National Park. Udawalaway is one of the mini national parks in Sri Lanka, but it is known for two things, not being as crowded as the other parks and its insane amount of elephants. You're able to show up at the gate and negotiate a price with one of the guides there. You'll only need to spend a half day here in Uduwalaway. After your epic tour of seeing alligators, elephants, water buffalo, and maybe a leopard or two, it's time to move on to our next destination, which is Tenga. I loved our time in Tengal. It wasn't very popular, so there weren't many people there, but there was still tons of stuff to do. You can use the local bus system to get around and visit some of the nearby beaches like Kuduwala and Goyamboka, both of which are beautiful. And you can also spend some time checking out the natural blowhole. After enjoying your time in Tengal, you can easily catch a bus further along the coast headed towards Marissa. Marissa is going to be our next stop and we're going to spend two days here. I much prefer Tengal Beach to Marissa Beach, but Marissa has an amazing atmosphere. Marissa is very popular, so there's a ton of tourists hanging out with restaurants and bars lining the beach. Mike and I were there over New Year's Eve and the parties every night were crazy. If you're looking for a good time, Marissa is the place to be. And last, but certainly not least, we are headed to Unawatuna for our final two days here in Sri Lanka. From Marissa, it's extremely easy to get to Unawatuna. You just hop on a bus and head around the coast. Unawatuna is another one of these small touristy beach towns on the south coast of Sri Lanka with some cool things to see. As I had mentioned earlier, Sri Lanka is known for its surfing and you can essentially surf the entire south coast of the country. I surfed in more places than just Unawatuna, but me being a beginner, this is my favorite place to surf or at least try to surf. I mean, at least I gave it my best shot. Another thing that you have to do while you're in Unawatuna is visit Dalwella Beach. Here you'll see a beautiful sunset, fishermen on stilts, and a massive rope swing tied to a palm tree. There it is guys, just like that we've spent three weeks traveling Sri Lanka. Depending on your travel plans, you can either head straight to the airport or you can head to Nagumbo, which is essentially the airport city. Thanks for watching my dudes. If you're looking to travel Sri Lanka, check out my in-depth travel guide where I cover anything and everything that you might want to know before your trip. Other than that, I'll see you guys in another one.